right? Yeah. Okay, have a good night. Thank you. Bye now. You asked for it, and I'm doing it. Today, I'm flying to Denver. Coming up in this video, I fly from LaGuardia Airport on a United A320 to the airport that serves the Mile High City. And as usual, I'll be providing lots of details that you won't see anywhere else. So sit back, buckle up, and enjoy the ride. Well, hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today, I am at Terminal B at LaGuardia Airport. And pretty soon, I'll be boarding a United Airlines Airbus A320. You're gonna come along with me today. Let's go. So this is only the second time that I'll be flying out of Terminal B here at LaGuardia Airport. If you watch my channel a lot, you know I fly very frequently on Delta Airlines. They're on the other side of the airport. That would be Terminal C. Formerly Terminal C and D, but the two have been combined into just one terminal now called Terminal C. Well, today I'm at the beautiful Terminal B. Earlier this year, I actually filmed a video here at LaGuardia Airport about this terminal, so don't forget to check that one out. There, I provided a very, very detailed tour of the terminal for my flight. And today I'm taking another flight out of this beautiful terminal, but before I go through the security area, I just have to spend some time here. This place is absolutely gorgeous. Oh yes, this terminal certainly does look good and I can't wait until the entire airport is completely finished and it's almost done. I recently visited Terminal C at LaGuardia Airport with its new head house, a new concourse. It is spectacular. And this is an amazing place too. Just look at this. Look at the mosaics on the wall, the artwork. This is the new LaGuardia. I love it. What a great land side. But of course, this channel focuses very heavily on the air side operations. I focus on things like air traffic control, routes of flight, and today I'm flying between two airports that are very, very different from each other. LaGuardia Airport has only got two runways. They intersect with each other. It's right in the middle of airspace that's very, very dense. And Denver has multiple runways and none of them actually intersect. That leads to a very efficient airport operation. I can't wait to go from one to the other. All right, well, TSA is in that direction, so I'm gonna go there now. Okay, I've just cleared TSA. I got through really, really quickly, and now I am enjoying the view from the beautiful large window just past TSA. Today's airport operations calls for landing on runway 22 and departing on runway 13. All gates, up the escalator. Let's get closer to the action here at LaGuardia. What are your thoughts on the new Terminal B? I'm curious to know what you think. Let me know in the comment section below. Finally, the fountain is on. Last time I was here, it wasn't on, so I'm glad to see at least some water here. All right, the fountain is on and it's doing its work. I love it. This is pretty neat.
Today I'll be flying on an A320 November 484 Uniform Alpha and I'll be sitting in the economy section. This aircraft is inbound from Denver and it actually just flew up the Hudson River and made a right turn and is now on final approach to runway 22. If I was on that airplane, I would have been sitting on the right-hand side of the aircraft because they flew up the Hudson and the view of Manhattan on the right would have been spectacular. But today I am on the departure side. Let me go to the window to see if I can see my plane land. And here it is. This aircraft is actually among the last few aircraft that got to land on the runway because in a few moments, a thunderstorm was going to be passing over the airport. Well, as you can see from behind me, there is a weather cell that's moving through. My airplane was actually one of the last arrivals to come into runway 22. LaGuardia is currently not accepting arrivals. All aircraft that are inbound to the airport are currently holding. Most of them right now are south of the airport on the Corey and Milton arrival procedures. So I'm very fortunate that my airplane was able to get in. This cell is not very big, so by the time of my scheduled departure time, we should be able to get out and taxi to the runway. Things are going to start changing and not going according to plan. This storm really came out of nowhere and kind of just lingered over the airport. Keep in mind that the purpose of this video is to show you the Denver airport, and I have to take a connecting flight when I land. The connection is scheduled for three hours, but with this storm, who knows when I'll take off. In the meantime, why not have some pizza? I'm working my way over to the departure gate, which is in a separate satellite connected to the head house by a bridge over the ramp. Imagine aircraft beneath you. This is not a common thing at any airport. Well, it would have been nice to see some aircraft taxi underneath, but all ground operations are stopped right now. You do not want to risk getting hit by lightning if you're out there, so LaGuardia is playing it safe. I'm headed down to the gate area in the terminal, and I noticed that there were a lot of people there. With lightning on the airport property, passengers were not allowed to board their flights. This put a damper on enjoying the brilliant new terminal as suddenly LaGuardia Airport has entered a period of irregular operations. It's now time for boarding, and my A320 is just sitting there. There's no one on the ramp to service the aircraft, and no passengers are allowed on board. This may take some time. It's taking a little bit longer than I expected. We're now about 25 minutes past the departure time and we still haven't boarded. The problem is that these thunderstorms, they just are not stopping. There are no thunderstorms to the west, but the thunderstorms that are currently over New York City are kind of just lingering here. Hopefully they will be gone in a few minutes and we can board. <laughs> All right, good news. It's now 30 minutes past our scheduled departure time and we are going to be boarding right now. Okay, I am finally entering the jet bridge now for my flight to the Denver International Airport. Come along with me. All right, it's all the way to the back of the bus today. 37F is my seat today. And here it is. This is the next to last row, but it has two windows. That's awesome. All right, I made it on board the United A320. Let's go to Denver. Looks like runway four is the departure runway now. I have to admit that this seat was very comfortable and the only empty seat on the plane was the seat next to me. No one likes sitting in the middle seat in the back. I especially enjoyed the view of the wing. From the window seat, I watched the fueling process. Unfortunately, since most of the flights in the terminal boarded all at once due to the storm, we had to wait to get fueled up. This took some time. All right, now it looks like a runway change to runway 13. After a storm, the wind just goes in different directions. That's the departure runway, runway 13, out there. The fuel truck filled us up with enough fuel for what is the longest scheduled route from LaGuardia on weekdays, but we weren't quite ready to leave the gate just yet. 
we had to wait for the bags to be loaded because the ground crew was servicing other aircraft first. And once we were all clear to push back, we had to wait for this United 737 to pull into the gate next to us because the path to that gate converges with the path to our gate. The good sign is that the ground crew for our A320 is in place. We need to get out of here soon. Ah, here we go. We're ready to make our way to runway 13. LaGuardia Ground Control has given us taxi instructions to the runway. To get to runway 13, we need to cross runway 22, the active landing runway. So the first clearance is to taxi out and hold short of runway 22 for landing traffic. This is pretty routine for all aircraft leaving terminals B and C, but today there's an issue. As we approached runway 22, we had to hold our position for some time. Typically, you hold for landing traffic, but up ahead, another departing flight reported FOD near the departure runway. FOD is short for Foreign Object Debris, basically anything that doesn't belong in the airfield, so the airport had to send out a vehicle to remove the FOD. This delayed us 10 more minutes. Once the FOD was removed by the Port Authority workers in the vehicle, we crossed runway 22. There are about four aircraft ahead of us now, which would make you think we'd be airborne in just a few minutes. But there is another issue that's preventing us from taking off now. You see, once we become airborne, ATC will provide us with radar vectors to our initial departure fix. It's called ZIMS. ZIMS is located over the town of Foul Rift, New Jersey. Once over ZIMS, we would proceed on course to Denver, but there's a problem. One of the four aircraft ahead of us is also going to Zins, and there needs to be sufficient separation between us and that plane, so we taxied over to a taxiway on the far western end of the airport as instructed by ground control, and we waited. That took another 20 minutes. Eventually, there was enough space between us and the other aircraft going to Zim's, and we were instructed by the local controller to line up and wait on the 7,000 foot long runway 13. It's now 2 hours and 8 minutes past our scheduled departure time. This reduces my time in Denver to less than an hour. And remember, this is supposed to be a video about Denver. I won't have much time there. We're now cleared for takeoff on runway 13 because the most recent arrival on runway 22 has landed and cleared the intersection with our runway. Notice the two Port Authority vehicles behind us. They're getting ready to do a safety check of the runway. Other than a few aircraft waiting in the distance for their departure fix to open up, there's no one directly behind us. Unfortunately, many of the arrivals from earlier in the day never made it to LaGuardia due to the storm, so there are less aircraft waiting to depart. I'm happy to be on my way and I'm enjoying the view of the new terminals here at LaGuardia Airport. Today, we'll be flying the Whitestone Climb, which requires us to turn right to south immediately after takeoff. This is for noise abatement purposes, as this turn allows us to climb over a park rather than a dense residential area. One thing I like about sitting on the right side of the plane when flying the Whitestone Climb is that I can turn my head back to see the airport that I just departed from. Now, remember, we're going to Zim's, but we have to fly our departure climb out, the Whitestone Climb. The quickest way to get to this point, Zim's, would be to turn right, but we follow a procedure by turning a very, very wide turn to the left. This turn ends on a 45 degree heading, or northeast, which is not the direction that Zims is in, but it's the direction that will help us with noise abatement procedures for departing flights. We won't be on that 45 degree heading for long. ATC will issue us a turn to the west, just north of the airport, and we can eventually head to Zims and proceed on course for the in route phase of flight. Let's speed up the flight a bit.
Alright, well, hello from the rear laboratory on this A320. So here's a little bit of an update on this flight. Unfortunately, the Wi-Fi is down on this flight, so it's difficult for me to determine where I am. Now, there is free messaging, so I'm actually texting people on the ground, asking them where I am. They're using flight trackers, so right now I'm somewhere over Kansas. We should be coming to the Denver airport soon. We're almost two hours late. What I'm being told from people on the ground is that we're going to be approaching the Denver airport from the south. Let's see what happens. And they were right. This video is a little different from my other videos regarding the en route phase of flight descriptions, and that's because of the lack of Wi Fi on this A320. But I'm well prepared thanks to my contacts on the ground with internet access, and they let me know that I'll be flying an approach to runway 35 right at Denver today. This is one of four parallel runways and located on the eastern part of the airport. We're going to descend to Denver. Denver, the Mile High City and its airport, is located to the east of the Rocky Mountains, so we won't get to see the mountains on our approach. We're flying a standard terminal arrival procedure called the Clash 4 Arrival. Rather than bring us straight into the airport from the east, this procedure has us head to a point south of the airport before we turn to the north before we land. We'll also be landing to the north, so we won't have to circle around to land on any other runway. There are also some weather cells in the area, and we make slight adjustments to avoid any rough rides under the control of ATC. Approaching the Denver International Airport from this direction gives you no indication that you'll be landing in such a major airport servicing a major city. We're flying over the High Plains. This is an area that's often overlooked when it comes to the Denver area. Denver is more known as being a gateway to the Rockies. For us today, it's just flat land. We're all ready for the approach, and at this point, we only need to make a right-hand turn to join the final approach course. Once we join the straightened approach, a 12,000-foot-long runway will be directly ahead of us. That's 5,000 feet longer than the runway we took off from at LaGuardia because we're at 5,000 feet above the altitude we took off at. Longer runways are found at higher altitude airports because of the thinner air. LaGuardia, with its short runways, is at sea level, and runway 35 right's touchdown point is at 5,370 feet. That's high. Runway 35 right is one of six runways at Denver. There are only two at LaGuardia. Runway 35 right is also one of four parallel runways. The four parallel runways are broken down into two pairs, runway 35 right and 35 left. The other set is 34 right and 34 left. They all have headings of 352 degrees. Runway numbers are generated from the compass heading of the runway using two digits, so the 35 designation makes sense for runway 35 right and 35 left, but you can't have more than three parallel runways with the same number. If an airport had three parallel runways, the middle runway would be labeled the center runway. This is the case for the Seattle airport. Don't forget to check out the videos on my channel where I fly in and out of Seattle. Since there are four parallel runways here, the other set is labeled the three fours, just one number less than the three fives, even though their heading is closer to 350 degrees. The other two runways are also parallel here, but they are so far apart from each other that they use different numbers. Speaking of things being far apart, this airport has more land than any other airport in North America. The airport sits on 52 square miles of land. As you can see from the view out the window, there is a lot of land out here. Denver Airport opened up in 1995, replacing Stapleton Airport, which served the city. It's currently a hub for Frontier Airlines and United Airlines, and today I'm using Denver Airport as a hub for United. I have no reason to be in Denver today other than to connect to another United flight. Well, I also wanted to fly here because my viewers asked for a Denver video, so here I am. We're clear to land on runway 35 right and are all set to be part of this major United hub.
we're about to clear the runway on taxiway Papa 7, one of the high-speed taxiways for aircraft vacating runway 35 right as we switch radio frequencies from the tower controller to the ground controller. Since this airport is so big, there are multiple controllers that handle the different runways and different parts of the surface movement area. With this being a really, really big airport, when you land, you don't immediately get the sense that you've landed at a big airport because it feels like you've landed in the fields, but this is Denver Airport and we will be in the terminal soon. The runway layout is designed for an efficient flow of traffic to and from the runways. There's no need to cross any runway and none of the runways intersect. You really can't get more opposite of LaGuardia than Denver. I'm in a whole new environment now. We're approaching the ramp area, and it's an efficient space with three parallel concourses and lots of space between them. But just because there's a lot of space, it doesn't mean that we'll get to the gate right away. You see, we're behind schedule, and we're not going to be at the gate at our scheduled arrival time. We're about two hours late, which means that our originally assigned gate is probably being used for another flight at the time of our arrival. Basically, the gate coordination is off, and the new gate that we were assigned still has an aircraft parked at it. There appeared to be several aircraft waiting at the time of my arrival. With an occupied gate, the only option was to wait. Fortunately, the aircraft occupying the gate was getting ready to push back, so our ground hold only lasted about 10 minutes. Again, that means less time in the terminal for this video. Alas, the aircraft we were waiting for pushed back, and the final route to the gate became clear for our A320. It's not my first time to this airport, but it's been several years, so as I entered the terminal building, I took a few moments to look around and orient myself. Of course, I checked a terminal map on my phone before getting off of the plane. Okay, All right, it is crowded in this terminal. We are about two hours late. I'm happy to be here. Now, I do have a connecting flight to take. I did want to show a little bit more of the uh, Denver airport, but I do have to rush in over to my connecting flight. So I'm going to head over to gate B20. So one good thing about my connecting flight today is that it is in the same exact concourse. There's absolutely no need for me to go to a different concourse to get there. I am on the moving sidewalk, but I am walking on it because I'm in a bit of a rush. So what have your experiences been like here at the Denver International Airport? Let me know in the comment section below. Tornado shelter. It's just the restroom. Denver Airport has been hit by tornadoes before. Many storms roll off the mountains and develop in the flat land just east of the city, right where the airport is. Inside the terminal, there's a lot of light from the many windows, so the restrooms provide a more secure place should a twister enter the area. I always love seeing old airplanes like this in airport terminals. Nice, Denver. 
This is an Alexander Airplane Company Eagle Rock Model A14, built in Colorado in 1930. It was used to carry mail. And throughout the terminal, just between the gate areas, there are areas where you can pick up a bite to eat. But between filming this and rushing to my next flight, I don't have a lot of time for a full meal. I did get a chance to see the famous tent structures over the terminal. The tents represent the snow-capped Colorado Rockies and are now an icon of this airport. It was also nice to catch a glimpse of the British Airways flight getting ready to depart for the UK. Well, it's getting really close to my boarding time, so I need to head over to my departure gate. And that's the Boeing 737-900 that I'll be taking for my next flight. I can't wait to get on board. Weather in New York is responsible for my short connection, but at least I made it. That's why I planned a three-hour layover. All right, it's time to board flight number two for the day. I'm glad everything worked out, but I have to admit that with that delay, I was stressed about making my next flight. I'm so glad I'm here now. All right, 14F here on the 737-900. First step, open the window. It's now time to start the whole flight process one more time. Ground crews prepare us for departure. Today, I'm flying north to the inland northwest to Spokane, Washington, and I am happy that this 737 has an in-flight entertainment system with a map. Unfortunately, again, on this flight, the Wi-Fi was down, but I was able to use the map to see my position throughout the flight. We are ready to push back off of our gate, and with the ramp clear behind us, we were able to push back safely. Believe it or not, we actually waited 15 minutes past our scheduled departure time to close the doors. Why? Well, there were several passengers on board that were late from their connection, so United held the flight for them. That was a really nice touch. It looks like our next door neighbor is going to beat us to the runway today. Today we will be departing from runway 34 right, which makes up the other set of parallel runways from what we landed on earlier. The runways branch out from the terminal area, making the taxi time to the runway very, very short. With tons of space available, the airport designers made it very efficient to transition from taxi to takeoff. Let's roll on runway 34 right under the command from the controller in the Denver Tower responsible for this runway. This is a 12,000 foot long runway and it's paired with its sister runway to its left at 16,000 feet. How many runways can you identify in the world that are that long? Remember that we're starting our flight already one mile above sea level. The air is thinner up here than at sea level. Well, I'm gonna leave you with some footage from my flight to Spokane. I'm glad I made it.
All right, well, I have arrived here at the Spokane Airport in Spokane, Washington. Thank you so much for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed my journey today and be assured that I will be providing many more trips like this to you in the future. Just make sure you click on that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on anything. Thanks everybody and take care. I'll see you very soon.